Hey there, I'm Ari from TechWise Guru, and I've got a great video for you on the channel today. This is one people have been asking me about ever since I published my low profile CPU cooler shootout in September 2019. And that is, well, how does Corsair's Hydro H60 liquid cooler fit into the picture if you are using a small ITX chassis for your PC? Now, in my low profile cooler shootout, I found that the NHL 12S was the best cooler in that roundup followed closely by the Big Shuriken 3 from Scythe. Now, those are both great coolers. They come in about 50 bucks. But, of course, being low profile, they're a bit limited in performance, and they generally don't compare to tower coolers like the Freezer 34 Duo from Arctic. Now, this won an honorable mention in my most recent CPU cooler shootout, which pitted a number of 120 millimeter CPU coolers against each other. One of those coolers was the H60 which performed about on par with this $40 cooler and yet cost $80. So in that shootout, in a large ATX case, I said, well, it's an okay cooler, but $80, it doesn't provide the price performance that I expect. So that brings us to today's review, the H60 in a small form factor chassis. This is the SG13 from Silverstone, my favorite ITX chassis, and the very chassis that I tested all of my low profile coolers in back in September 2019. So essentially, this is part two of that shootout. I'm just adding one more cooler to the mix, but to add a little spice to this review, I decided I'm also going to change up the various orientations of the fan. So I'm gonna look at whether it's better to set the H60 up as an intake or exhaust. I may actually also test some third-party fans if the Corsair fan doesn't seem to be performing up to par. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, I'm gonna be checking GPU temps because one of my concerns about using a liquid cooler is that it essentially either blows hot air into your case and onto your GPU or basically replaces an intake fan and in, in fact, or works, works as an exhaust, which means you don't have any intake fan at all for your GPU. So here's the H60 installed as an exhaust. You can see the radiators right up against the front of the case, and then here it is set up as an intake. So the fan's pulling air in from the front and blowing it through the inside of the case. As it turns out, this second orientation is indeed superior. Take a look at the benchmarks here. At idle, it's definitely slightly cooler. In fact, quite a bit cooler, but a little bit louder, and that's because that fan is right up against the front panel as opposed to being a little bit muffled by the radiator itself. Then in Cinebench, which is my highest level load, you can see it's much, much cooler with the H60 set to intake. It's also quite a bit louder. I'll get back to that noise level later in this test. And then when we have Battlefield 4, which also tests the GPU temps, we see actually it doesn't actually have an effect on the GPU. It's pretty hot either way, um, but neither is worse than the other. And yet with an H60 set to intake, the CPU is quite a bit cooler and the system was a little bit louder. But overall, given how superior it is thermally when you mount the H60 as an intake, that's how I ran it for the rest of my tests. Here you can see it in the idle benchmark versus the low profile coolers. It is truly dominant, 31 degrees, but it is a little bit loud at 33 decibels. That's in the middle of the pack in this test, but things are about to get a whole lot worse in terms of noise for the H60. Once we get to the CPU-Z stress test benchmarks, we see that the Corsair Hydro H60 is definitely providing some great thermals at 66 degrees, way below any of the low profile coolers, including the Noctua NHL 12S, but that its noise level is beyond belief at 52 decibels. Its fan is running at 1776 RPM, which is actually not that high compared to some of these other coolers, but it's right up against the front panel of the case. There's no hiding that noise, as opposed to these low profile coolers that are tucked inside the chassis. And even then, at that RPM, this is a very loud fan, and I will be returning to this subject later in this review. So overall, you can definitely see there's more performance on tap here with the Corsair Hydro H60, allowing you to use much higher powered CPUs, but you do have to contend with some noise. Now Cinebench R15 tells much the same story. The Corsair Hydro H60 has a lot more cooling potential than the low profile liquid coolers, and it's also quite a bit louder. Well, I must admit I was pretty impressed by the H60. In terms of thermals, it 
easily beat all of the low profile air coolers I previously tested, including the Nocto NHL12S. So that means if you're interested in the lowest temperatures you can achieve in a case like this, you probably want to go with this liquid cooler. With that said, there was one fly in the ointment, and that was that it was definitely loud. It was just so incredibly irritating to be next to, and that is because that fan is right in front of the case. There's nothing shielding it. There's nothing coming in between all that noise and your ears. You're going to hear every decibel. In fact, you can listen to it right now. Here's the H60 at idle. And here it is at load. It's sounding a lot like a jet plane. So I thought I'd do one variation of this test by upgrading the cooler with Noctua's NF A12 X25 fan. Now this fan is considered by some to be the best 120 millimeter CPU cooler fan on the market. That being said, it's also very expensive at $30. And I previously tested this on the NH U12A tower cooler from Noctua, and while I found it to be very impressive, I also found it to be a little loud at its maximum RPM of 2000 RPM. That's really, really fast for a 120 millimeter fan and even Noctua can't perform miracles when the fan is spinning that fast. So what I'm gonna do in this test is actually use the included load noise adapter that will lower the maximum RPM to 1700. That will actually match the RPM of the stock fan included with the H60 and provide a really interesting comparison. Can we lower noise levels and increase performance at the same RPM? That remains to be seen. So let's open up the box, install this new fan, and get into the benchmarks. Didn't I just say that even Noctua couldn't perform miracles? Well, I take that back. Have a look at the benchmarks here with the A12X25 installed. At idle, it is two decibels quieter and actually slightly cooler as well. But in the Cinebench benchmark, it really pulls away. The temperatures are the same and yet it's 14 decibels quieter. It's nearly as quiet as the very best low profile air coolers in the test. And that's despite coming in eight degrees cooler than even the best NHL12S from Noctua. And then in Battlefield 4, the GPU actually becomes the noise floor. The CPU cooler is so quiet here that that 39 decibels that you see here is actually just the GPU cooler buzzing away. That's the reference GTX 1080 that I'm using. The CPU itself is incredibly quiet and comes in at just 60 degrees. Heck, even the GPU is running a little bit cooler here at 84 degrees, so it's just an all around win for the H60 once it's upgraded with the Noctua fan. Well, I think that just about does it. I feel like I've found the holy grail when it comes to cooling in the Silverstone SG13 case among the most popular ITX cases on the market. And it does demand liquid cooling, but not just any liquid cooling, not just stock liquid cooling. While the H60 on its own was decent in terms of thermals, the noise levels were out of control. The stock fan on this cooler is, to put it simply, trash. So when I upgraded it with the $30 Noctua fan that you see here, it completely changed the characteristics of this cooler. It was much, much quieter on a level with air coolers, and yet the temps were even better than with the stock fan. It was a win-win. It was amazing. I actually didn't expect that much of a difference. So kudos to Noctua for designing a great fan. Just take note that I used the low noise adapter. It ran at under 1700 RPM, and I really do recommend you do that. At 2000 RPM, this fan gets a little bit ragged, just like any fan does at high RPMs like that. So if you want the best cooling in your SG13 case, go with the H60 cooler and then equip it with this upgraded fan. You will not be disappointed. With all that said, I have communicated this with Corsair. Um, they are aware that the H60 has its limitations and I'm gonna be sending them this data so they can take a look at what's going on with the fan. They've actually told me that later in 2020, they're gonna be releasing a new version of the H60. This one came out in 2018. It's the most recent version but they do have a new version in the works and I do hope that it has a new fan as well. 
So um, I, I, like I said, I'm going to be sharing all this data with them so they can take a look. Maybe if they haven't tested it with this Noctua fan, they'll see, well, what is Noctua doing that we're not doing with our fans and how can we improve? Because ultimately the H60 is actually a pretty decent cooler and it's really versatile. It can fit in so many systems, but the fan has to go. So I'm hoping in the next generation of the H60, we'll see an improvement there. If you have any questions, which I bet you do, post them down below. Please give this video a like if you did indeed like it. That helps me out a lot and I'll catch you next time.